In this assessment, we imagine wanting to go from this epoxide to this product. Note that under the conditions shown, this product does not form. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is because when we protonate the epoxide, nucleophiles, like the alcohol shown, are going to add at the most substituted carbon the carbon that would be the most stable carbocation. Whenever we talk about the reaction proceeding through what would be the most stable carbocation, we're kind of treating this reaction as if it's SN1. So we'll put SN1-like and, and, and put it in quotes. Opening an epoxide with a weak nucleophile goes by SN1-like conditions where reaction happens at the most substituted carbon. And yet, if we look at the product we wanted to make here, we're adding our new nucleophile at the less substituted carbon. If SN1-like reactions added at the most substituted carbon, what type of reaction should we use to add it at the least substituted carbon? SN2-like. So instead of reacting with a weak nucleophile, we could react this with a strong nucleophile. So if we used isopropoxide as our nucleophile, now this is going to be, as a strong nucleophile, it's not going to wait around for a cation to form. It's going to attack directly with the lone pair doing an SN2 reaction and kicking out, breaking that CO bond. We can finish the reaction. We get a negative charge there. Here's the new group that's been added. All that would remain would be to grab a proton from another molecule of isopropanol in solution, and now we would have generated the desired product. So by taking a reaction that goes under SN1-like conditions and switching it to SN2, we get substitution at the other carbon of the epoxide. That's going to be a general trend that we see going forward. Weak nucleophiles open epoxide at the most substituted carbon, strong nucleophiles open at the least substituted carbon.